Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Garage Billion and the first episode on my Porsche 981 GT4. You probably have seen this guy lurking in the background while I'm working on the Safari. Um, I bought this in I think October of 2021 to replace my 996 GT3. In all of my history of Porsches, I think I've now had about 20. This is the favorite car by far I've ever owned. It's just phenomenal. This car is in essence brand new. It's got 17,000 kilometers on it um, and it was very well looked after by the previous owner. Um, so there's not much for me to do on it mechanically but the one thing that has annoyed me when I took it out for a road trip in uh, November last year is that it's very difficult for me to mount a phone somewhere on the dash. Um, on the 996s and the 964s and all kinds of other Porsches I've always found a simple solution. On this one, it's been tough. There's, there really isn't any place to just pop a quick mount into the car. So I've had to go for a more permanent kind of solution. And let me show you what I've got. All right, so let's see what arrived in the mail today. I'll just pop that out on the bench. There we go. So this is, oh, I hope you can see this. This is the Renline kit for a Porsche 991 and 981 and 718. Um, and I've also bought a bit of an upgrade for this, which is a, let's see, wireless magnetic fast charger. Let's see what came in the package. So this is the one uh, set that I bought and I'll pop the price up for you here for what I paid for this in Europe. Um, so you can see there's a magnet here that you can stick on the back of your phone. And then there's the bracket that goes onto your center console. And then this ball and this goes together and then you have a magnetic mount for your phone. So this is a standalone kit on its own, but I also thought while I'm in there, I'll buy this, which is basically an upgrade option. And this is for if you have an iPhone, then you get a MagSafe charging option. And you can see somewhere here, there is a USB-C, there you go. So this then actually allows your phone to charge while it's just clicked onto the magnet. And it comes with a whole bunch of extra things like a little USB-C cable, a MagSafe ring, which is this one that goes on the back of your phone and another clip so that this this basically replaces this so you can throw that away and this then becomes the kit that i'll be installing into the car if i can live with it because this is a fairly big thing and i don't know if i like this it's not permanent i can take this away if i don't like it after this road trip all right, let's go get some interior tools so that I don't destroy my lovely car on the inside. Um, I think what I want is a fairly broad, broad um, base. Right, so let's see, I think, yeah, I think this one would be the safest to use because I just want to pop off the center console. So let's go with this guy, and if that doesn't work, we can always bring it down to a smaller version, which probably would be this one. But uh, let's try with this one first, because I think this will do the least damage. So let's get into the car. All right, welcome to the inside of my GT4. What we need to do, is we need to take off this trim piece here. And it, if all is well, this is just a press fit. So um, let's get into the car and start taking this out. All right, so we should start here at the back and then just pry it loose all the way to the front. And then it's a matter of just pulling this forward, straight forward, and then um, we should be able to get to the screws that we need to. So let's get going. There we go. And be aware that this is actually sitting a lot tighter than I expected. I thought this will pop off fairly easily and it does require some force. So um, be careful that you don't break anything that you will regret. There we go. 
and on this side it seems to be still sitting tight into the dashboard and that's bugging me a bit all right so you can see i've now pulled it loose from here this one was quite tight so uh, it required some force but obviously you know this is a fairly you can see it's a fairly flexible panel so i don't think you can easily break it but nonetheless where we now need to get to is down there you can see they are all the same and then um, once i have them all unclipped i need to just pull this one forward and in the end i think just using your fingers are the best but you can see i am skinning them so uh, all right it's out and um, let me show you what this looks like on the inside so this guy was quite tough to get loose uh, the rest was actually quite easy and you can see why you should pull it straight forward because this actually goes in to the dashboard and so does this so don't pull it don't do this to it right because if you if you if you swing it up like this you will break it so pull it straight out towards you and then you should have uh, good luck in getting it out so uh, this came out in one piece which is good all right so now that we've got this loose the next job is to loosen these two t25 torx screws it should not really be tight so uh, yeah and it isn't so this comes out fairly straightforward okay there we go that's one down and the second one right so now that we have those two uh, screws out from the center console it's uh time for the next step and that is to assemble this guy um so we need to take up this little screw and then just attach it to there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of Loctite to it because I don't want this coming loose uh, on a road trip and then have to strip the car apart again. There we go. Get that to go through there. Okay, and now we need to tighten this up with an Allen key, and that should be it, really. This is aluminium, so you don't have to over tighten it. I think this will probably be just fine. Yeah, so now this is fully assembled. So make sure that you have it the same way as I do. And now we go back into the car to put it into the dashboard. All right, so now we have the fully assembled bracket and it's got to go in like this. You can see the bracket basically follows the curve of the molded plastic. And now we just have to put those two screws back in and uh, we should be good. If it feels tight, it's tight. You don't have to over tighten this. All right, so this is now sitting, which means I can put back the uh, trim panel. So let me show you. So down here, this area, that is where this has to clip around. And this goes into these slots here. So make sure you slide them on properly. Otherwise, you're going to get problems later on. Yes, that's what you want. So that one's in its spot. This one's in its spot. Now, I believe we can just start pushing it in again. Yes, this is what we want. And so it goes for here. Yes. All right, so that is now back in its spot. The mount is in. So now with the ball in its place, we put this cup at the back. 
and then pop this over like that. There we go, that's starting to bite. There we go. No, not yet. There we go. Turn the logo the right way up. And I think that should be it. Right. Now that that is done, we have to go down here where there is an extra socket, power 12 volt socket. We pop this guy in like that. Pop in the USB C like this. And now we should be ready for a road trip. Anyway, so that's the uh, Renline phone, phone holder installed in the GT4. So um, I will let you know after the road trip how this has gone. But uh, until then, thank you for watching the first episode of my GT4. And in the next episode, we will continue on the Safari. Goodbye.